Play of City family. What is up? It is Art and Bobby back in the grocery store, the produce section to be more concise because I've been wanting to make a video here for a long time. And given the fact that we still have a few more days of permission from Whole Foods to film in the grocery store, we might as well do it now because filming here in any other grocery store is Waldo City and it's off limits. But I thought it'd be fun to kind of take you around the produce section and show you how I shop here. Give you some tips on buying fresh produce, show you a couple hacks that'll preserve some of your fresh produce like parsley much longer and just give you some general do's and don'ts in the produce section because man there's nothing I love better than buying fresh produce but there's nothing I hate more than wasting it and seeing it go to spoil without eating it so before we get into the produce section you know the drill like subscribe share all those good things but the most important thing is there's a bell icon right below the video you're gonna want to enable all notifications because for this month of January we have six to seven videos going live we have a live stream every Friday night where we make a recipe from start to finish and it's a lot of fun and you don't want to miss out. All right, let's start out on something really important. See the word organic strawberries here, right? See this right here, USDA organic. So when you guys see that, that means that this produce, these strawberries was not sprayed with any pesticides, right? Wrong. This is misnomer number one. A lot of people think just because it says USDA organic, it's not sprayed. It is sprayed. They're always sprayed. If you don't spray a crop, it's going to die. You're going to lose it and farmers are going to lose their livelihood. The thing is, it has to be sprayed with USDA approved pesticides or herbicides. That means it is more stringent, right? It's still better for you and you can't use the nasty Roundup from Monsanto, but they still are sprayed. I've talked to some local farmers at the farmer's markets during the summer and they said it's kind of a good thing, bad thing, because even though they are safer USD organic approved sprays, sometimes they're not as effective. So they have to spray a lot more. That might not be bad for the strawberry per se, but that runs off into the soil, into the water system and gets carried over to other crops. So not always better, but still way better than conventional because conventional is sprayed like crazy. And when you're talking about nasty stuff like Roundup, you don't want that in your body. All right, I wanna show you the coolest hack ever when it comes to fresh parsley and cilantro. Come over here. I buy one bunch of parsley every 10 days or so. Wow, this is the smallest one, but it's actually not a bad deal here at Whole Foods. Check this out, Art. It's a buck 49 for an organic Italian bunch of parsley. Now, see the word Italian? I like that because look at this. These are the Italian flat leaf. This is what most cooks and chefs and restaurants cook with. It's a tender leaf. If you compare it to this, this is the parsley that I grew up with. You used to go to a restaurant in the 80s or a steakhouse. They give you curly parsley like this. I don't like this for culinary purposes. It's more just for garnishes. Imagine like you get a steak, they put that sprig of parsley on the plate. That's the stuff. I always buy organic flat leaf parsley because it would be a member of the Dirty Dozen. It's highly sprayed, it grows in the ground, and it has no natural defense to it. But I don't like wasting money. So even though 150 is not a bad deal for uh, organic parsley, here's what you do. As soon as you get home, cut a half an inch off the bottom of the stems. Wash the parsley, shake it really dry, pat it with a towel, then fill up a jar or a mason jar with about two to three inches of cold water, put the parsley in there, and then take this bag, the bag that you took it home with, put it over the top, store it in your fridge, change the water every three to four days, and you guys, no joke, this will last you up to 14 days. Yes, 14 days, which is great because normally after five or six days, it can go moldy or starts going yellow. I tell people on the Flav City Instagram this all the time. They do it. It works like a charm. Also works for cilantro. Doesn't really work well for mint and stuff like that, but you guys check it out. And by the way, if you're not following me on the Flav City Instagram, definitely check me out on there. We're doing stories of what we make every night for dinner and it's a lot of fun. So I'm gonna take that home with me. Let's move on to kale. I love kale. And I don't just love it because it's a hipster ingredient, it's a superfood. I love it because it's tasty, but it also is a superfood. It's high in vitamin A, C, and K. But there's a few options here when it comes to kale, and you really want to be careful what you're looking at. So this is one that a lot of restaurants use. It's green kale. But see how curly and almost tough it is? This is the kale I never buy because it's very, very tough. If you try to put this into a salad, it's gonna stay almost like rubbery and be very, very hard to chew. So instead, I always get this kale. This is lacinato kale. But look at the leaves here. They're way more tender. They're way more soft and supple. And this, my friends, will make a much better salad because it's so much easier to 
finesse down into a soft salad. You can actually massage this a little bit after you chop it and it gets really, really uh, soft. Here's the deal. This is not just called lacinato kale. It's the most confusing thing ever. It's called dinosaur kale, black kale, Tuscan kale, and lacinato kale. But I love this stuff. You have to buy it organic. Why? Kale is on the Dirty Dozen. It's not just on the Dirty Dozen. It's at the top of the list of the Dirty Dozen with spinach. Kale and spinach by weight are the dirtiest of the Dirty Dozen. So you really, really want to buy organic. And check it out. This is actually not a bad price. When Amazon bought Whole Foods, they lowered the price. $1.99 for a large bunch of kale is not bad at all. But what you don't want to do is buy it in the bag. Let me show you. And here's why you don't want to buy the bag. Number one, it's the curly green kale. But number two, count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Dozens and dozens of stalks. I don't love this stuff because number one, it's more expensive, right? I'm always looking out for your and my pocketbook. Number two, you cannot eat the stalks of the kale. They're fibrous and tough. And when you buy these things, they're not only in here, but they're usually pieces that have leaves attached to them. So you have to do the work of separating them. You don't want that, you guys. It's much more economical to buy the bunch and stay away from the stalks. Oh, me don't play that game. Here's something interesting, come over here. So we oftentimes see bagged lettuces, which I typically don't buy except for something I'll show you in the meantime, in a second, triple washed. So what does that really mean? If it's triple washed, does that mean you don't have to wash it at home? And the answer is yes. It's actually washed initially to get rid of debris from the field and then two more times to clean it. So you don't have to uh, clean this at home. But when they actually triple wash it, they do use a cleaning agent that could either be bleach or hydrogen peroxide. We're talking about in very, very little diluted amounts, but I'm not comfortable with that. I'd rather just buy a big thing of romaine and chop it myself. But I just did want to let you know, if it does say triple wash, you don't have to wash it at home. Now, the only actual lettuce I buy in the containers is this right here. Check it out. Look at the price. It's the organic baby spinach. We talked about this before. You have to buy organic for baby spinach because it's the dirtiest of the dirty dozen. But here's the price right here. It's $4.99, look at this one, for a pound. And you guys, this is one of the best prices around. I've gone to many a grocery stores with y'all and surprisingly enough, the 365 Whole Foods brand is the cheapest on the market. It's pretty much the same price as Costco. You go to Aldi, you go to Target, the organic spinach is way more. One thing I find really interesting about Aldi, as cheap as the most of their stuff is there, the produce, especially the organic produce at Aldi, is not a very good deal. This is a great deal, and it's got a ton of nutrition in here. Do not buy baby, K or, uh, baby spinach or spinach thinking it has a lot of iron. It doesn't have a lot of iron. It has a lot of other nutrients in here, but man, I love this stuff. It's so darn good. One more thing about bag salad mixes. If you have an option between a bag that is puffy and airy like this and a bag that is skinny, it doesn't have so much air like that, get the skinnier one because as the uh, lettuce gets older, it lets off natural gases. That means it is old and it's filling up the bag. And you can see here, look, it's getting really sweaty in there. Whereas this bag is dry as can be. This bag is thin. This bag is pretty fat. So. The date. Now the dates are actually surprisingly the same. So my guess is this was stored in a more hot uh, environment and aged much quicker. So just something to keep in mind when you're buying bag salads, skinnier is better, which is kind of ironic because if you're eating salads, you might want to get skinnier too. <laughs> we have a whole video about Clean 15 versus Dirty Dozen, but since we're here and we have access, I just want to highlight a couple of things that I find really interesting. When you're talking about vegetables like asparagus or cauliflower or cabbage or even the broccoli over there these are actually clean 15 vegetables you don't have to splurge and get organic because all these vegetables share one very common characteristic they have compounds in here that are natural pest deterrents and because of that they don't have to spray them too much which is really interesting because i would think of something like cabbage which is a cruciferous vegetable as growing pretty much on the ground and being dirty but because of that special compound it makes it clean and they only have a few uh pesticides or herbicides they found on here in the first place. So hey, anytime you can save money, I'm all about that. I'll put the full list of Clean 15 versus Dirty Dozen vegetables in the uh, description box. And you could also check out the video after this one too. I wanted to come over here to the freezer section really quick because I have no problem buying some vegetables frozen like corn, peas, or spinach. It's good to have those in the freezer because those are picked at ripe 
peakness and frozen immediately, and you can't get fresh peas in the winter. The thing is, you have to be careful of produce frozen bags that have been frozen, thawed, and refrozen. So what do I mean? Check this out. Feel your bags. Get up close and personal with your bags. If it feels chunky and clumpy, that's a telltale sign. This bag has been frozen, thawed, and then refrozen. But this is good. If you can feel it, if you can be my hands right now, you can see all the beans are separate. That's really important because if it thaws and refreezes, you lose uh, natural gases, it'll dry out, and it's not good. So just keep that in mind. Also, you don't have to buy organic green beans or green peas because when they grow in that pod, they're protected from a lot of the spray. So it's something I thought about when I saw that. So just keep that in your mind about frozen vegetables. Feel them, touch them, love them, caress them, they will love you back. <laughs> I know there's cheaper places to buy avocados in Whole Foods, but I don't know what's been going on here lately. They've been having awesome sales. And five for five dollars of large avocados is a great deal. And here's a bonus that I think of buying it here is that 99.9% .9 of the avocados I buy here are awesome. They're creamy, they're not black inside. Sometimes you get them and they look good, but they're actually hard and watery. That never happens here, so I don't know. They must get really good avocados, but they're consistently good, even though they might be a little more expensive than other grocery stores. I don't mind paying a slight premium if I know they're gonna be primo uh, avocados. Just one thing I never do is buy the pre-made guacamole. If you look at the price of $9.99 per pound, it's like my wallet cannot handle that. I'd much rather mash some avocados at home and do it myself. I ain't gonna burn cash like that, I'm sorry. I can't come to the produce section and not show you two of my all-time favorite things. Whenever you see me cooking on live or on Instagram, I always use those red finger peppers. Here's where I get them. They're always here at Whole Foods. You can get them at Asian markets too, but many other stores don't have them. And I love them because they're not too spicy. It's more fruity with a little spice. And even though it's $9 a pound, you just need a couple at a time. They're great for garnishing because they add color and they add a little bit of pop of heat. And then right here is something you can find at a lot of grocery stores. It's fresh turmeric root. This is what I use to use, uh, this is what I use to make my immune system boosting tea. It is a bit pricey at $8 a pound, but a little bit goes a long way. All you have to do is grate it into fresh sauces or I actually grate it into my tea. Once again, Asian markets will always have this kind of stuff, but at most other markets, you're not gonna find it, right? So very, very cool here. All right, family, that is it. There's my guide to buying produce, what to look for, what to avoid, and why. I hope it helps you out, but let me know what kind of videos you wanna see. Down below in the description box, leave a comment. These videos are all about you guys. Also all about you guys is the amazing support we've got this month. This channel is taking off, primed to hit one million pretty soon. We love it. I keep spreading the love. Keep sharing. We got two videos below us right now. But my main man, Art, and I will see you very soon. Until then, we say unto you like we always do. Hashtag keep on cooking. Mad love and peace.